Hey, what's going on everybody? Big J Glees here, and we're going to look at a video in a little bit different way, a little bit different type of presentation. And we're actually going to do this all in one take, and you're going to come with me into a lab session, and we're going to lab the uh, shotgun two back close, or shotgun two back tight, however you want to call it. I don't know exactly. It's like a split close, I think is exactly what it's called. I've had a few questions, uh, both in messages on Twitter, messages on YouTube, as well as messages on mutthead.com, which is a forum for Madden Ultimate Team. Now, I'm not real big on Madden Ultimate Team, but I do enjoy that forum. It's very active, and there's a lot of people that you know are, are searching for advice and searching to get better, and I feel as though helping out you know anyone is a good thing. So anyone that's looking for help, here I am, here for you. So when I go into practice mode and I go to lab, one thing that I do is I make sure that I'm labbing against a good defense. And I use Seattle, so I use the offense that I'm using when I'm trying to lab a particular offense. So Seattle is a team that I use. I'm going to play against the Baltimore Ravens. Oftentimes, I'm sorry, oftentimes I will use Seattle versus Seattle because Seattle has the best defense in the game. They don't necessarily have the best offense, but I do like to lab against Seattle versus Seattle. Sometimes I like to lab against Baltimore. You know, either way, just make sure you're labbing against a good defense and also that you're playing on all Madden. So the first thing that we're going to do in this split close formation is we're going to look through it and we're going to find some plays that we like. Uh, the double ins looks like a pretty good play. The power O, I can probably get to the outside, so that'll be my outside run option. The fullback inside looks like a run that would be very good inside. It looks like inside zone basically with a lead blocker. The halfback slip screen, of course, is going to be something that I'm going to run. I love to run screens. Wide receiver corner could have some potential. We'll have to look at that. Uh, Z spot, possibly. And that halfback wheel play looks really good. That's something that I definitely would like to run, as well as the FB trail. So those are the plays that I'm really going to look at and digest. This uh, PAF slide could possibly be good, too. This is a formation that I don't run, but it is something that I do like and I like for a few reasons. So we're gonna get in here, we're gonna check it out. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into a full screen for this overview of this offense. All right, so the first play we're gonna come out in is halfback wheel. And we're gonna run this against a cover three defense. Now, when I come out in a formation or a particular play, I like to look at the routes and see what they actually look like on the field. Because as you notice, the running back on the left, that's a completely different route, which is in my stick, than this. So it's going to react differently even though the play art looks as though it's exactly the same. So that's one thing that I always take a look at. I like to look at the play art on the field. Also like to see if there is a difference, what the difference is. So I'm running against man, I'm running against zone, maybe he glitches man out, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna have to go through and we're gonna look at it and we're gonna find out. So just looking at this play right now, I know that there aren't many quick options on this play. Based off of knowing the game, I'm pretty sure that I can drive any zone back with those two receivers on the right and throw the ball to my fullback or tight end, whatever you want to call it. Pretty sure that he can get the ball almost against anything. If I run this against this cover three, I'm almost positive that I can just throw it even though that flat defender is right there. We're gonna try it out. And that's an absolute yes. All right, so I know because I know the way the game plays that that flat defender is not going to cover that. And I've covered that in other ebooks uh, that I did, the Buffalo and also the Rams are plays like that. Uh, that. Basically, you come out in a formation, you got that flat, you got other routes that drive the flat back, and that's just what happens. So next I want to take a look at the running back route on the left, and we're going to see what it does in man. Now, he's man against the linebacker, and that's important to know. Because he is going to react differently against the DB. I don't think he's going to glitch this guy out too badly. Nah, he doesn't. Nah, it sucks. So now I know that's not what I'm running. I'm not running that. So I'm not going to be running that route in particular. What I do think I should do is get a quick hitter here with B. Alright, so the B route on a slant. Putting him on a slant... It's one hot route that I can use, so I can I can hot route once and snap the ball and run no huddle effectively. I can come to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball quickly if I want to. It's also something that I can throw against blitzes, and it's going to double to bring the zones, the yellow zones, and the linebackers down so I can hit Baldwin over top. So that's why I'm going to do that. 
I also have the flat corner combo to the right. So that's why I like this. So I have the flat corner combo to the right. I have the flat that I can throw whenever I want to the right. Now, what am I going to do with this running back? So for me, I most likely, if I'm playing someone that's pretty good, I'm probably going to block him. So that would be two hot routes. Maybe I will put him on a vertical. Verticals out of this set kill a lot of things. And actually, we'll run the vertical. We'll run it just like this. And my reads on this play, I would look right to B immediately if there's a blitz. So if I see there's a blitz, I'm looking right to B, looking right to RB. So those would be my two reads. Then I'm also going to look at Y, because if there's zone, Y is going to be open as well. If I don't see a blitz, I'm going to let the play develop. So as the play develops, I'll look to X, I'll look to possibly A on the corner ball, and if not, I always have the vertical late, and I always have the uh, slant pattern across the middle late. So against this, I should be able to hit that, and I do, down into the inside, click on and catch it. So now we're playing levels over the middle of the field, and we're playing flat corner combo to the right. Now I can leave the running back on that flat, but it's not necessarily going to be open against this uh, particular defense. If someone were running all yellows, it would be open. If someone's running a purple to the outside rather than a flat, it'll be open. So that's basically, those are the reads that I'm going to be using on this play. So as you see, that does get open, but I screwed the pass up. So I didn't throw it down into the outside. If you throw it down into the outside, you're able to get that. So that's something else that you really need to know. Also, hash specific. So let's run this from the right hash. So from the right hash, the coverage will absolutely be different. Go down to the outside, we're able to get it. All right, so we're able to get it against that. And I would run it a couple times just to make sure that it's legit, that I can get it. Yeah, it's tight. It's real tight, especially on that play. You notice that the flat defender played a little bit deeper. He just, for whatever reason, went off the ball a little bit deeper. And that's going to happen. And when you read that, you probably should throw to the fullback. As soon as you read that, he did it again that play. He backed up immediately. So as soon as I see him back up immediately like that, then I know, you know, I'm just going to throw right. He backs up like super far like that. I'm just going to throw it right there. All right, if he doesn't, then you can wait on the corner ball. You can throw it down into the outside. But that's going to be your read on that side. Uh, if they're playing all yellows, you can hit Y. You can also do vertical. So if I have a vertical here, you should get open just like that and for a very short gain. I can wait on it a little bit. So if I put him on a vertical and wait, 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 wait on it a little bit more, get a little bit more of field. I don't know, I guess probably like seven yards, something around that. Six yards, five yards, probably about five yards. Let me run it one more time. Let's see how deep I can get him to go. That's about ten. Close to 10, 8. All right, so we get about 8 yards there. Now, I also would take this play into cover 2. So if I'm going to run, I'm going to get out of this set because they don't have a conventional cover 2 in 4-6. So let's go to 4-3, and we're going to run a traditional cover 2. Now, when I say traditional, it means with no blitzes. So see how Aggie, Cloud, Star, those yellows drop differently. They don't drop like a traditional cover two defense and in a traditional cover two defense those yellows will actually drop uh, medium medium distance medium and then the middle will actually drop extra deep so that's with any cover two and you'll see that as i go into this play so we're on cover two press and we're going to stick with the same play we're going to go halfback wheel and we're not going to change our setup our setup is the same and you'll know that they're in cover two because they'll be too high so if there's too high most likely they're in cover two uh, it could be in cover four, uh, but I see that they're pressed on the outside, and I see that they're not Y-rated or base aligned. So if they're not base aligned, I know that those guys in the back are playing deep in some type of way, or they are manned up. So that's, that's the only option that they have from this. So as I'm looking at this, I know that I can get B. I'm pretty sure that I could get A if I gun the ball up. So if I throw the ball up, we're going to try it right here. So if I throw the ball up, I'm able to get it over that flat defender because the flat route on the fullback keeps that flat defender down. Uh, let's see if I can throw that flat pattern to the right, even though they're playing cover two. And I can. For a few yards, I can still get it. If I need a first down, that's something I might run. If I'm down by the goal line, 
that's something I might run. So I know that I have that in my back pocket now. Uh, against cover two, let's see if we can get the X pattern. I know I can get the slant, so I'm not even going to throw it. I can throw a slant against anything. But can I get the X pattern? I can. All right, so I can get the X pattern. So I know that I'm money against cover two. Now, what else could I possibly do against cover two? Like, how can I scorch cover two for a big game? So what I'm thinking that I may do is motion a half back to the left. Now, what that's going to do is I should be able to throw it up into the outside and throw it over that cover two defender's head. But it's a very late read. So that would be something that you would have to have time with. It's not great. All right, it's probably better if I run it from the left hash. And you probably think, well, why would it be better from the left hash? Well, the reason why it's better from the left hash is because it makes the route get to the point that it gets past the cover two defender quicker. Because it's a shorter pattern. He's going to hit the sideline quicker. See, it takes very long developing. And also, since there isn't a route to pull that flat defender down, it's very difficult to throw. So this is something that... After looking at this, I probably would just scrap. I probably wouldn't throw this. Yeah, I wouldn't throw this. I wouldn't even put this in my offense. So now I know that I'm not going to run this. So we can scrap that. So this is the setup that I'm going to use. Like that. Or like that. Or I'll keep him on his route if they're playing a lot of yellows with no sideline defenders. No flats, no purples. Alright, so that's the first play that we're going to look at. Let's take a look at another play. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to check out the next video in this series by clicking the video that's playing in the center of the screen right now. You can also do so by clicking the link down in the description below. I'll be going over the next couple plays in this mini scheme, as well as giving you tips on how to lab and how to know what to look for in the game of Madden. So thanks for checking in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.